So here's a nice case. We have a PA radiograph here, lateral radiograph there. So on the PA radiograph, you have these opacities bilaterally, look at least partially calcified. Also see something along the left hemidiaphragm here, probably along the right hemidiaphragm as well. Very hard to see, but there it is, right hemidiaphragm. And this, again, suggestion of this extra pulmonary opacity along the lateral aspect of the hemithoraces. So we also do these with dual energy, so we can actually look at these optimizing bone and calcium. And so certainly we see that these areas indeed are calcified. They're, the more you look, the more you see all these areas of calcified abnormality, which has a suggestion of uh, extra pulmonary origin. Here's a lateral radiograph again. The lateral radiograph again shows these calcified lesions. Really, I mean, what they are. It is, they are what they are. These are calcified plaques along the hemidiaphragms bilaterally. So this is a classic example of asbestos-related pleural disease. If we pull up the CT, we're going to see a lot of these plaques along the anterolateral and posterolateral thorax, pretty classic location. Also, paravertebral, pretty common. Non-common to see some along the diaphragm, as we see here in the, on the left and on the right. So pretty classic distribution here. One little pearl, the asbestos-related pleural plaques, for one reason or another, they nearly invariably spare the apices. So you'll note that the apices, really there's nothing to speak of in regard to pleural disease. So here, pull up the, pull up the coronal reformation just to hammer that home. That's not plaque, that's a little calcium within a artery. And that's that. Another little pearl here. So I've seen people call patients with asbestos related pleural disease as having asbestosis, essentially labeling them as having asbestosis. Remember, Asbestosis really means that someone has pulmonary fibrosis in the setting of asbestos exposure. And so unless you're sure they have pulmonary fibrosis, you should not be labeling someone as asbestosis. And the pulmonary fibrotic pattern that they typically have is that of a UIP pattern. There's a little bit of reticulation back here. You wonder if it's actually mostly uh, pulmonary edema because it's mostly interlobular septal thickening. If we look closely, though perhaps early fibrosis um, could not be excluded based on this imaging appearance. You might want to get prones to see if those areas open up.